In this clip, I want to share with you a real little gem of a piece of knowledge and understanding that I actually learned myself in Echo One many, many years ago, but has stood me really, really well in a business career of the last, over the last, on and off for the last 30 odd years. A real little gem. I want to talk to you today about the price elasticity of demand. Let's refresh our memories about a couple of important things. Firstly, we do know total revenue, TR, is calculated as price times quantity. We also know the difference between total revenue and TC, total cost, represents profit. Now, there's almost a, an innate urge when you're in business to put your prices up. And the, the desire is basically along the lines of if you put prices up, then total revenue goes up, and if total revenue goes up, then profits go up. People that think that way are forgetting one crucial little fact, a fact that we learned several weeks ago, namely the law of demand. So remember, Kepa, the law of demand says, if the price of something goes up, the quantity will be demand will fall, and vice versa. So here's the problem. If you, if you put your prices up and the law of demand holds true, then Q is going to fall. Now, what if the percent change in Q is greater than the percent change in P? Then the impact on total revenue is not going to be favourable. What we need to know, therefore, is what we call ED, the price elasticity of demand. We need to know what will be the percent change in quantity demanded in response to some percent change in price. Let me give you a little example. Now I want you to imagine you've graduated, got a job and you're a junior exec and you've been invited to a management meeting. And you're sitting there and somebody in the board meeting says, we've got to put our prices up, we're not making enough money. Alarm bells should go off at this point. What if, what if in fact, you knew that you were selling 1,000 units a week at say, $5 each? Well, we know that TR is therefore 5 times 1,000, which is clearly $5,000. And let's say you go ahead with this little price rise, say 50 cents, and you put the price up to $5.50. So let's do that. We'll put the price up to $5.50. And what do we find? We find that the quantity sold falls to 600. So what's happening now? Well now we have $5.50 multiplied by 600. Well of course we can see that total revenues actually fall. Now this is contrary to what you wanted to happen but it's happened because the price elasticity of demand is highly price elastic. So we go back over here and we can see that our percent change in Q, well the drop is from 1,000 to 600, a drop of 400, so our percent change in Q was actually 40%. The percent change in P, the price rise, clearly only 10. It's given us a little figure, which we call our elasticity coefficient, it's given us a figure of 4. Now what, what does this 4 actually mean? It means that for every 1% change in P, there's a 4% change in Q. Now, in fact, the really courageous thing for you to do at this point in time is to say, stop, jump up at the whiteboard in this board meeting and say, look, I'm sorry, but in fact, the really correct thing to do is to drop the price. 
let's have a look. Let's say we drop the price by that 10%. What do we find now? We find that sales have risen to 1400 What's our total revenue now? Well, it's four and a half multiplied by 1400 which is 6300 Now we've actually dropped the price, remember, but total revenue's actually risen. So where's, the, where's our little gem of knowledge? Well, here it is. The little gem is in what we call the TR test or the TR rule. And the rule says, in this particular case, if the price elasticity of demand is price elastic and therefore it would throw up an elasticity coefficient of greater than one then for a price fall total revenue will rise but for a price rise total revenue will fall now it's possible that consumers may not be sensitive or responsive to a price change in which case we would say that the, their price elasticity demand is relatively price inelastic. Now, if that was the case, then actually putting your prices up yields quite a handy result. Let me quickly demonstrate. Now, I've employed the, 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 the visual services of a steeply sloped demand curve. And contemplate total revenue of 0, P1, A, Q1. Put the price up, or prices rise, to P2. What's going to be the impact on total revenue if demand is price inelastic? Well, if ED is inelastic, in other words, the it will throw up an elasticity coefficient of less than 1. We know that the percent change in Q will be less than the percent change in P. And if that's the case, the impact on quantity demanded, as you can see, is not very great. And what we can see here is that our total revenue has risen from 0 P1 A Q1 to 0 P2 B Q2. And clearly, the second rectangle is much larger than the first. Now, contrary to what we found when price elasticity demand was price elastic, a price fall here, bad news. Drop the price, P3. Again, guess what? The percent change in Q is less than the percent change in P. And in this particular instance, the gain in sales is also not very great. So here we have a, a situation where 0 P3 C Q3 yields us a very low level of total revenue if you like. So quickly summarise. We go back. If demand is price elastic, so we've got an elasticity coefficient of greater than 1, for a price rise, for a price rise, total revenue will fall. But for a price fall, total revenue will rise. However, if demand is price inelastic, for a price rise, total revenue will also rise. Good outcome. But for a price fall, total revenue will fall. Now, what we've got to look at, what are some of the factors that will actually determine our relative price elasticities. We'll look at that next time.